Hey, how's it going, guys? And welcome back to another Jeep Wrangler Rubicon Ultimate Edition build. And as you can see today, we have laid out uh, a couple parts and we're going to hit up three topics real quick uh, shocks, bumpers, and links. It's going to be a real quick video overview of it. And then off camera, I will build them all. But this is just to show you guys how it's done. So, as per the manual, we have shocks, of course. And I already built this um, this piston. Uh, the shaft seems to be a titanium coated uh, type shaft, and we have the uh, piston. The shaft itself is uh, 50 millimeters, so it's pretty thick uh, for this uh, for this crawler. We have the small piston, and it's held by two Eclipse. If you guys can see one on the bottom, one on the top. Now you have many options uh, when choosing your piston. Uh, I went with the uh, three three holes or three slits on the side uh, just so we can get uh, some smooth riding. Um, now when it comes to uh, springs, uh, the kit itself offers the red one, which you see here, it's red. So this is the super soft and then you have your medium compound, which is the um, the green one on the, on here. Uh, you can, they offer many different types of springs, softer springs as well, but this is the uh, the one provided in the kit, and of course they provide you with the 30 weight oil for uh, the shocks itself. Now these uh, shock bodies are pretty cool. Uh, not uh, like the like the kit when I bought it back in um, I bought a ha my first Honcho kit. I bought it back in 2010 or 11, and they have the plastic. Um, shock body so this kit actually has aluminum shock bodies which is pretty cool okay and then of course you have your little reservoir and they include some decals which I already uh, put on the, uh, the the reservoirs and uh, you can go ahead and wrap the reservoir with those decals um, together with that you have uh, your pretty much your bottom seal which is gonna be uh, two little rubber seals and then this middle plastic Part. It's kind of like a bushing, I guess, that goes in between that for a perfect seal. Uh, your bottom cap, as you can see there, and then your rod end for the piston, and uh, what else? Oh, and then you have your preload um, tensioner or preload ring for the shock. And then you have uh, the spacer for each spring. And then the uh, bottom cap. So let's go ahead and put this together, and then we'll touch on um, the other the other subjects we have here quick. So of course you're going to start off with your seal on the bottom. Then you have that uh, bushing in the center of that seal. You guys can see there. And then I'm going to go ahead and put on this other seal, this little rubber O-ring. And then here is the tricky part. We don't want to break those O-rings. So what we do, we grab some uh, green slime like we've been using on uh, on this build, and just a, a small light coat on the threads itself. Okay, just so the threads won't break uh, that seal up. So we're going to go ahead and put on the bottom cap, just so we would not lose the uh, seals that are in there already. And now we can just pass this piston right through those seals. And you'll notice once you force it through that it's trying to push, but because the green slime is there, it'll provide a lubricant. There you go. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and put on that preload um, ring. Uh, then we're going to prepare this little reservoir and the way it's done is on the cap itself it has a, like a little um, a little mount there for it and then you just run this little 1.5 millimeter screw so let's go ahead and do that mount the little reservoir it just gives it some scale realism the uh, reservoir doesn't really work they aren't like the um, G made piggyback ones so there you go 
let's go ahead and put on the uh, the rod end at the bottom. So you want to start it out, give it a little twist, start it out, and then you want to. Um, you can use different things. I've seen people just put duct tape here, hold it down and screw it in. Other people put electrical tape on their uh, pliers and they crunch it down and then they uh, they can tighten it out. Whichever way you can, just make sure you don't um, scratch or dent or put a dent in on the uh, shaft itself because you could end up damaging your shock. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll be back. So here it is done. I put the... Um, the rod end on the bottom and uh, one thing I did not uh, mention was that the kit uh, includes a 3x7x8 um, a um, shock damper that goes right down here it's pretty much a small rubber piece just to prevent it from bottoming out but uh, we want to get the most travel out of this shock so we're, we just I just eliminated just um, so we could have a good um, travel Okay, so let's go ahead and fill it up with the 30 weight that was provided from the kit. And the way I do this is I fill it up maybe quarter, almost half, and I just push it up and down, get those air bubbles out. And then once they're out, just fill it, not all the way to the top. I'd say I fill it about right there. I don't try to fill it to the top. But you can go ahead and fill it to the top if that's your personal preference. And we want to pump it out again and try to get all those air bubbles. So we're just going to let this sit here on our little shock mount here. And then we'll get back to that. So we're going to cover real quick links. Okay, this is just a regular your uh, steering link. This is a metal link, but I'm just going to show you how it's done using this as an example. So this is your six by one hundred and six millimeter steering link. So you, here you have your rod ends, of course, and you have a one point five millimeter set screw going through the rod end. Now you don't want to screw it in here first because it's just going to go right in. So you want to put it on your um, rod end, okay, and then. You, you can proceed to just screw them inside the uh, link. It's just that simple. Uh, there's nothing to it. And then um, you want to put a, an eyelet or, a, or ball end or ball cup end. Well, not a ball cup, a ball end. So that way it goes in your rod end. So you just put it inside there. Uh, and that will provide a space for your, uh, for your screw to go through. So we're just going to screw this in real quick. And if you notice, they're both uh, in opposite directions. Just give it a twist until you get them both on the right direction. Okay, and that was the uh, quick 101 on links. All the rest are like that. And the cool thing about this kit is that all your bottom links are aluminum or this type of material, this uh, metal material. And then your upper ones are all plastic. So you have the three link in the front and the four link in the back. So... Uh, I will go ahead and do the rest and then I'll show you guys once it's all done. So let's go ahead real quick and move into the bumper. Um, to this bumper I added some decals just because I had some decals from Parma left over so I just put on some decals. Um, but the cool part is that it includes, the kit includes your tow hooks. I went ahead and painted these red, you guys can see, and then the set screw I painted them um, gray for a little bit of scale realism so there's a trick to these you can see um, the little marking or the mold when when they mold these little pieces they have like little circles markings just put those to the rear so that way it doesn't look uh, odd and uh, you can go ahead and just screw them in it's a 1.5 millimeter screw there you go let's go ahead and do the same with the other one Okay, so there you have it. Pretty cool, huh? Little red uh, tow hooks on this uh, black bumper stands out a lot. So for the rear, um, I went ahead and installed them already. Okay. Um, and the little license plate SCX10 JK on the rear. Okay, so the rear has this uh, special mount for the wheel for the tire that goes on the rear. So all it takes is this little mount here. 
where you screw in a 2.5 millimeter screw all the way through because it's going to be the mount for your wheel and then you have this other little hole where your wheel uh, your bracket here mounts to the bumper and it's held on by this little um, body clip okay so then the other side is held with this 2.5 millimeter um, hex and we can go ahead and screw that one in there you go now there's a little thing that I made uh, for here I I found that when you put the tires kind of off center and it doesn't um, it doesn't hold on straight it's always like crooked and lopsided so I went ahead and I uh, found one of my old HPI E10 uh, hexes and I cut it like super thin in half you guys can see there like let's see if I can focus there we go all I did was cut it in half whoop all I did was cut it in half okay I dremeled it in half and all I'm gonna do is put it in the back right here so when you put on your tire or your wheel it sits uh, perfect right here see and it's gonna be centered perfectly so we can go ahead and pop in a tire real quick and all you have to do is just line it up now it's perfectly centered and it, it includes one of the, like a wheel nut kind of deal so you can go ahead and put that on I'm gonna paint this red later on it's just rainy so I won't be able to paint it but that's going red as well there you go check it out completely centered there goes the mount in the rear and that's the bumper 